How would you find the Maclaurin series for arctan x? One thing you might do is you might try using the basic formula for Maclaurin series. And that is that any Maclaurin series is equal to f of 0 plus f prime of 0 times x plus the second derivative at 0 x squared over 2 factorial etc. following this pattern of following this pattern of the nth derivative at 0 x to the n over n factorial. So beginning with our function f of x is equal to arctan or I can write that also as tan inverse of x. Evaluate f of 0, that's 0 because the tangent of 0 is equal to 0, so the arctan of 0 is also equal to 0. The derivative of tan inverse, do you remember what it is? Very good, 1 over 1 plus x squared. And that, too, is fairly easy to evaluate at 0. Plug a 0 in for the x, and you get 1 over 1, which is 1. Now we need to take the derivative of that derivative. So the second derivative, you can use the quotient rule, or since there's just a 1 in the numerator, you can think of that as 1 plus x squared to the negative 1 and use the chain rule. So the derivative would be negative 1 times 1 plus x squared to the negative 2 times the derivative of the inside, which is 2x. And you can plug a 0 into that and see that once again you get 0. So far, not so bad. But how about the next derivative? Maybe we should rewrite the second derivative as a fraction. Negative 2x over 1 plus x squared squared. Now in order to find the third derivative, we have to use the quotient rule. Do I hear groaning? It does look like it's going to get messy. Perhaps there's a better way. So let's back this up for a minute. And let's look at our most basic power series. 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the fourth, etc. You may not see right away where this is going, but stick with me and you'll see how this connects to arctan of x. This is a geometric series. It's a geometric series and it converges. Well, not always, but it converges as long as absolute value of x is less than 1. And what does it converge to? The sum is, remember the formula for the sum of a convergent geometric series, a over 1 minus r. a is the first term and r is the common ratio. So in this case, this converges to 1 over 1 minus x. That is a nice place to start. If we know, let me write this with the 1 over 1 minus x on the left. If we know that the function 1 over 1 minus x is equal to 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed, etc., on the interval from negative 1 to 1, I can manipulate this series and create power series for other familiar and similar functions. For example, 1 over 1 plus x. 1 over 1 plus x is the same thing as 1 over 1 minus a negative x, so I can take this series and replace each x with a negative x. So that becomes 1 minus x. When I replace this x with a negative x, I'm raising it to an even power, so it stays positive, plus x squared, minus x cubed, plus x to the fourth, etc. So now I have an alternating series. 
I can then take that series and I can replace the x with an x squared and I get 1 minus x squared plus x squared squared minus x squared cubed plus x squared to the fourth which is 1 minus x squared plus x to the fourth minus x to the sixth plus x to the eighth, etc. And I have a series for 1 over 1 plus x squared that's made up of alternating signs and terms with even powers of x. Why is that useful to me? Because this expression is the derivative of arctan. So if this is the derivative of arctan, I can integrate to get back to arctan. So the tan inverse of x is, let me take this whole series and integrate that as well. Integral of 1 is x. Integral of x squared is minus x cubed over 3 plus x to the 5th over 5 minus x to the 7th over 7 plus x to the 9th over 9, etc. And now I have found a series for tan x without having to find all of those multiple derivatives of tan. The one step that's left is to find the interval of conversion. So let me copy this over. Tan inverse of x is equal to x, we said, minus x cubed over 3 plus x to the 5th over 5 minus x to the 7th over 7 plus x to the 9 over 9, etc. And the theorem tells us that the radius of convergence is the same as the series we started with. So the same radius of convergence. So that radius of convergence was 1, or the interval might be negative 1 to 1, but we must check the endpoints separately. So what does that mean if we're checking the endpoints separately? It means that we have to look at our series and we have to plug in 1 for x and we have to plug in negative 1 for x and check for convergence for these specific cases. So let's take a look. Let's plug in a 1. We get 1 minus 1 third plus 1 fifth minus 1 seventh plus 1 ninth minus etc. What kind of series is that? That's an alternating series. Alternating series with decreasing terms and terms going to zero. So it converges. And what about plugging in a negative one? When we plug in a negative one, we get negative one, and the next term becomes plus a third, minus a fifth, plus a seventh, minus a ninth. Again, alternating series with decreasing terms that are converging to zero, and that also converges. So our final conclusion is, that the interval of convergence for this power series for arctan of x is the closed interval, including the endpoints, negative 1 to 1. And that's it.